In this video, we're going to be covering how to play Tyranids. I'm Stephen Vox from Vanguard Tactics, and I'm joined with Michael Costello. Michael, how are you doing? I am so excited to talk about the Nids in 10th edition, front runners alongside the Space Marines with the new Leviathan box. Yes. Can't wait to get stuck in. Now, Michael is our resident Tyranid coach. You had a fantastic season with them in 9th edition, so I'm really excited to find out more mm. about what Tyranids can do in 10th. But before we continue, a massive, massive thank you to Games Workshop for our preview access. So everything has been given to us to preview and we are really very much appreciative for this. Now you will be able to download and see all of the rules that we're gonna be referring to, but we're gonna hopefully give you some top takes on everything. We're gonna be covering the unit rules, the stratagems, the enhancements, the combos, the strengths, the weaknesses, to give you a really good insight into this Tyranid index. So Michael, let's kick off first of all, with the army rule. So what do we get for being a Tyranid? All right, so Tyranids, we get the synapse rule, okay? Now there's, there's two kind of rules we get. Synapse is the one that affects the whole army. Um, and what this means is that some units in your army will have the synapse keyword. So on your data sheet at the bottom, you'll see it will say Tyranids, uh, maybe what the unit is, um, it'll say synapse on there for some of them. Is that like a particular type of unit? Like, the, well, does the winged hive tyrant have that? Like one of the leaders? Yeah, so it's essentially like your leader bugs. Anything that's got like a brain on it, you'll okay. tend to find has the synapse keyword. Um, and anything, yeah, leader bugs. Some of the big ones, like the Turvagon, um, do have synapse as well. Um, so what synapse gives you is if you're within six inches of a synapse model yeah. or unit, um, you will do all of your Battleshock tests on 3d6 instead of 2d6. So, of course, normally with Battleshock, we're going to roll two dice, compare it to our leadership characteristic, and we want to roll above our leadership characteristic. Yeah, and why that's important is because Battleshock is something new that's happened in 10th edition. Now, Battleshock will really impact you in a negative way if you fail what we call your Battleshock check. You normally do this in the command phase, and you will take a Battleshock check for each of your units that is below half strength. So half strength is either, let's say it's got 10 models, mm -hmm. and now it's only got four left in the unit, yep. that's below half strength, or you maybe started with 10 wounds, and you're now on four wounds. That would also require you to take a Battleshock check as well. And there are other, some outer phases, so yes. some really powerful, scary units can make you take a Battleshock check. Um, and if you do fail it at any time, then your objective control, which basically helps you hold objectives, will be zero. So that's going to be really impactful when it comes to holding objectives. You won't be able to apply any stratagems to those units as well. And stratagems mm -hmm. are a way to enhance your army. Um, and finally, there's some other checks as well. If you want to fall back, for that's example, right. you could lose, model if you you could lose models, so, yeah. which is not nice either. So having some extra reliability around, you know, passing these tests yeah. is very powerful. Yeah. Um, okay, love it. So I think we've covered synapse in terms of the data sheet yes, quite well. Yes, absolutely. And when we go on to the stratagems, you'll start to see that they're much better on units that are in synapse too. So it sort of links into the, the stratagems. Okay, nice. Yeah. The second part of their rule is shadow in the warp. Um, this will be on most of the units that do have that synapse keyword, shadow in the warp. And this is a once per game ability, uh, and it's very powerful. So you can use this in either player's command phase. Okay. Again, once per game. Uh, and what you do is um, all of your opponent's units on the table will have to take a Battleshock test. Wow. Yes. So as we've mentioned, if Battleshock and you fail it, um, your OC is zero. Yeah. Which means maybe if you use this in your opponent's turn, yeah. you would calculate control of objectives after the Battleshock step. Yes. Okay. And after they've done their Battleshock test, they could end up not holding objectives because their OC has been reduced to zero. Nice. Likewise, in your own turn, it can make it much easier to take objectives away from your opponent. Yes. And also kill enemy units because they won't be able to use defensive stratagems. Yeah, so if your opponent has really good offensive stratagems, mm -hmm. then it's probably best to use in their turn. Yes. If they've got really good defensive stratagems, maybe it's better to use in your turn. Am I right by saying that? Yeah, absolutely. And if there's a, ever a time when you've got to hold more objectives, mm -hmm then you kind of need to figure out at what point is best doing that. Yeah. Because also, if you do it in your opponent's turn, you will stop them, if they do become battle-shocked and having a zero OC, mm -hmm. you will stop them being able to perform certain actions like cleanse objectives. Yeah. That's very powerful. Yeah. But along with that as well, if I wanted to, let's say, uh, take an objective off you, mm -hmm. and now you've just made my unit battle-shocked, 
Yeah. I got OC zero. So yeah. I can't, it's going to be really hard then yeah. to take the other objective off you. So I could kill you, but yeah. I might not take it off you. Yeah. Um, and if you've got any of those really cool rules that allows you to keep objectives under your control, and yeah. I don't know, uh, until the next turn. So look, we've got loads to talk about, but it's a very, very powerful detachment rule as well. So remember, when you are picking your army, and Tyranids will have that army-wide rule, which is Synapse. Synapse, or, and the Shadow and the Warp. And the Shadow and the Warp, so the two-parter. You also then get a detachment rule. Mm. So let's talk about that next. Yeah. Okay. But before we do so, we can take a short break and we'll be right back. We wouldn't have been able to do any of these battle reports or any of this preview content without the help of Games Workshop. So a massive, massive thank you for sending us all of our preview copies so we can share with you. And if you do enjoy this content, please like and subscribe and make sure you tune in for more Warhammer 40k 10th edition battle reports and content. But before we continue, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, The Outpost. If you're looking for a great deals on your miniatures, paints and gaming supplies, you, we've got you covered. Their wide variety of exceptional service makes them the go-to destination for all hobby needs. So don't wait, check out The Outpost today. Link in the description below. Okay, Michael, so the detachment rule for the Tyranids. Let's talk about it. What is it? Okay, so their detachment is the invasion fleet, which obviously very thematic. Uh, and what this means is at the start of your game, um, you're going to choose an adaptation. Okay. And there are three, three adaptations to choose from. Yeah. The first one is Swarming Instincts, uh, and this gives you sustained hits one on all of your melee attacks against enemy infantry and swarm units. Right. Now, sustained hits is every time you roll a critical hit, which is basically an unmodified roll of a six to mm -hmm. hit, will create an additional hit. That's right. Okay, Absolutely. awesome. And this is one of those universal special rules. Awesome. So that's going to be fantastic against Horde. Yep. Lots and lots of infantry models. Yep. Okay, awesome. Yep. So you can really tailor this then. You can, yeah. All right. You okay. can, yeah. What's another one you can pick? Well, the second one you can pick, um, this one only works against monsters and vehicles. Okay. But you gain lethal hits. Right. So lethal hits every time you roll a critical hit roll of a six. That will basically automatically wound the target, mm -hmm. but it won't trigger any other abilities like devastating wounds that normally trigger on a wound roll, a That's critical right. wound roll. That's right. But again, having you know like eighteen point three percent of your because that's roughly what it is to roll a six, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, Some yeah. say I've never seen them, but apparently they're <laughs> on the dice somewhere. You roll those sixes mm -hmm. automatically, eighteen percent of the first step wound. Yes. And obviously, then you go through to the wound allocation steps. Yeah. So it's going to help you increase your output. Does that work on melee and range or just yeah, melee? Yeah, so all of these abilities work on all of your attacks. Right, what about the sustained hits one? It, all of your attacks. Oh, okay. All of your attacks, yeah. I think I said melee, but it is all of your attacks. Right, okay. All of your attacks. That's really, really good. To keep it nice and simple. Yes. So ranged yeah. or melee or psychic. Or psychic. You can have sustained against infantry. That's right. Or you could have lethal against these guys. Exactly. And it, it's really good because obviously in 10th, um, vehicles and monsters, their toughness is massively increased yeah. compared to the strength of some weapons. So really useful ability to have if you're playing against an army that's mainly vehicles. I would definitely right. say lethal hits is a real winner in 10th edition. Yes. There were instances of it in 9th edition, mm -hmm. not as strong as they are now. Agreed. So because of the toughness scale was certainly increased. Agreed. So what's the third one? The third one's pretty cool. Okay, so this one's called Hive Predators. Uh, and what this means is that if you roll a critical hit yep. for any of your attacks, so that's that six to hit, um, that attack has the precision special rule. Okay, now precision means that if you can see a character, mm -hmm. you need visibility for precision to work, but it does mean those attacks that have now hit can when they wound, be allocated to a character that is leading a unit. Yes. So you still need to see them. Yes. That's very good. So my hot take on this, Steve, um, is that the sustained hits one is a great go-to against infantry and swarms. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, many armies in the game are going to revolve around infantry. Um, the only ones I can think of that just don't have any are things like knights, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, you know, they're going to be in the game. That's a great one to have on all of your units. Yeah. Okay? You don't need to be in synapse range for any of these abilities. You just get them all the time. Great. Okay. Um, and there are some stratagems later we can talk about, which is the main reason why I choose this one. Um, but of course, there's going to be situations where lethal hits is useful. Yeah. Or even that precision one. Mm. That sounds really good. Mm. Yeah. Especially if you're taking things like well, come on to the second of his later. Let's not yeah, get yeah, too yeah. excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Okay, so because we've taken this detachment, mm -hmm. we then unlock some enhancements. We do, yes. Okay, so Michael, what are the enhancements? 
But before we do that, an enhancement is a paid for upgrade. That's right. That you can put on a non epic hero. So That's right. Epic heroes are like the kind of named characters mm -hmm. that want, they've got enough built in, don't yeah, need yeah, any yeah. more rules. Exactly, exactly. So it's for more of those lesser characters. And these enhancements typically buff your own unit, mm -hmm. or maybe it can have an effect on the model itself, or sometimes the, the units it's leading, or like an army wide ability as well, which yeah. is cool. So, Michael, what are the four? And then I want to know mm -hmm. which is your top two. Okay, all right. So we've got Alien Cunning. Okay. Um, uh, this one allows you, after both armies have deployed, yeah. to select up to three 200 units and redeploy them. Right, okay. okay. So you could put this on like a Broodlord or something, because he's a non exactly. he's a non epic hero. Yeah. Stick him on the Broodlord and cool. Now you've got basically redeploying your army. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Broodlord. Uh, you can also put them into strat reserves for free, strategic reserves, so they can come on later in the game from a board edge. That's cool. That's really cool, especially after your opponent's deployed. Um so maybe you've seen like a flank is slightly stronger than yours and you want to just yeah. um tactically redeploy. Uh so that's the first one. Yeah. Um we've then also got uh, perfectly adapted, um, which allows you to re-roll, um, hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, save throw, charge roll, advance roll, but it's or You don't get to re-roll all of them, sadly, okay. and it's once per turn. So once per turn, you get a re-roll, essentially. A is, bit like... Is that on the unit or the model? The model. So it only model. affect the model That's itself? Right. Yeah, okay. just the model. All right, so you've got one that affects the entire army, mm -hmm. one now that affects just that model. Yeah. Okay, what other ones we got? Um, so we've got one which means that your synapse range for that model is increased to nine inches. Okay. It's okay. Um, it'd be fantastic on a character that isn't innately synapse. Okay. But I don't think there are any, unfortunately, because it makes sense for a Tyranid army that all of the leaders sure. um, are the, the nose for synapse. But nine inch, it, it's nice. It's yeah. nice to have. Okay. Yeah, especially later on in the game when the armies get a little bit more stretched out. Mm -hmm. Nice to have a big an aura. Now remember, because the enhancements are paid for upgrades, yes. sometimes you might be in a position where you think, do you know what? I've got that many points left. There's nothing else I can really take. Yeah. I'll just put it in. You might as well. Why not? Sure, remember it. Nine inch synapse. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, now remember you can take three of these. Yeah, only three, up to three. But what's the fourth one? The fourth one, okay. All right, the fourth one. Adaptive biology. Okay. All right. Now this gives the bearer the feel no pain five plus rule. Now a feel no pain rule is essentially an additional save. Yeah. So you've taken your armor save or your invulnerable save. You failed it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe someone's done devastating wounds to you and mortal yeah. wounds that have just gone straight through the armor. This feel no pain save essentially allows you to shrug off some of that damage that might be inflicted on a five plus. Yeah. So all basically 33% of all incoming damage is going to be completely, well, just nullified. That's good. I'll do you one better, Steve. Don't do not do me one better. So if at the start of any turn, yeah. the model has lost uh, any wounds, so if it's below its starting wounds, okay, okay, yeah. um, the feel no pain becomes feel no pain four plus no. until the end of the battle. Are you joking? No. So if that's... Is the winged hive tyrant? Can he take it? He can take it. I've got a special place in my heart for the Turvigon um, because she has 16 wounds. Wow. And this toughness 11 with a two up save. Um, so as soon as she's taken any wounds, right. she's now got a four up essentially until the end of the game. Um, so you, you want to take this on a character that you know is going to survive like a round of combat or uh, yeah. a round of shooting. Um, and if you can get like, um, this is very cheeky here, but if you can find a character that has hazardous. Yeah. Um, so hazardous, after you've shot with the weapon, on a one, you take mortal wounds. And because it's a character, it'd be three mortal wounds. Yeah. And then they survive to the next turn. You trigger your four plus feel no pain because you're below your starting number of wounds. You are hoping for a one though. You are hoping for a one. But um, I like it. But yeah, it's okay. cheeky, yeah. All right, I like good. it. Can so... you guess what my top two are? <laughs> Well, I think your top two is going to be the redeploy. Yes. I think that's very strong. Yeah. Um, and then I also think that one, obviously. Mm. Now, because those enhancements are so strong, yeah. and for me, they are probably auto-includes. Yes. I look at enhancements, and correct me if I'm wrong if you've got a different approach, Michael. When I'm looking at enhancements, I typically go, right, these are so strong they're going in my list even mm -hmm. before I write anything else. Yeah. 
And then the other enhancements, like maybe that third one, mm. in this case might be, if I got any points left, yes. I'll add it in. Yeah. So I'm kind of putting my enhancements in two categories. Auto takes, mm -hmm. nice to haves. Yes. And maybe I'll probably forget because it's <laughs> yeah. irrelevant. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah, yeah, the yeah. extra three yeah. inch sign apps. Absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. That's exactly how I think, um, you know, when you're looking at your army list build, that's probably what you're going to do. You split it into those two groups yeah. uh, and make your decisions based on that. Okay. So that's the enhancements. We're going to take a look at the strategies. Before we do that, we'll be back shortly. Let's take a moment to appreciate Colorforge, our fantastic sponsor. Their range of spray paints has become our go-to for making our miniatures come to life quickly and efficiently. The quality and variety of colors they offer are truly unmatched, providing a smooth application for stunning effects every time. Check out Colorforge for your next hobby project. With the release of Warhammer 40,000 10th edition at Vanguard Tactics, we've put together the perfect course for you. If you're already playing 9th edition, but you want to seamlessly transition into the new edition, leave behind everything you know about 9th and understand everything you need to know about 10th, then this short course is going to be ideal. We break down all the complexities and give you step-by-step -step guidance on how to really make the most from 10th edition. We're going to help you understand all the basics of the game and then some top tips along the way to help you really get the most from your army and your playing experience. And if that's something you want to do and get signed up on our short course which you can study in your own time, then do check out the links below and get signed up to our Accelerator program. Okay, Michael, let's talk about stratagems. So these stratagems can be used throughout the game mm -hmm. and it'll tell you on the stratagem when and who and what restrictions there are when you are using them. Now remember when you start playing 10th edition you get a command point at the start of each player's command phase. So turn one you'll get one when it's your turn of battle round one we'll get another. Yes. So you'll slowly build them up and you can spend them and sometimes stratagems are one CP, sometimes they're two, so on and so forth. And yeah, they're either reactive or active, mm -hmm. and they're just ways to really fuel your army. We've got six to go through. Yes. Let's cover stratagem number one. Okay, so stratagem number one is called rapid regeneration. Okay. All right, uh, and you activate this when you're targeted, so when a Tyranid's unit is targeted, um, and that unit gains the feel no pain six plus special rule. Okay, it's all right. All right. Pretty good. Do you want better? Go on. If that unit is in synapse range, it's Phil No Pain 5 plus. Okay, now that's very good. One command point. That went from good to exceptional very yes. quickly for one CP. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Obviously, this is better on large units. Mm -hmm. The more dice you roll, the more you're going to get out of this, basically. Yes. Okay, nice. And is it, what's that new model that's just come out in the Leviathan box? The one, the big brain? The Neuro Tyrant. And that allows you to put just units yeah, in yeah, exactly. synapse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty strong. That's pretty cool. Anyway. That's cool. Anyway, later on, we'll cut, okay, I really like that stratagem. Very good strat. What's stratagem number two? Okay, stratagem number two is Adrenal Surge. This is two command points, right. so twice as expensive. Should be twice um, as good then. Now what you do, you do this in the fight phase. Okay. okay. And you can select either two units in synapse range, okay. or one other two in his unit. Okay. okay. And this is a theme, you'll see this in a few of these stratagems, right? Now, that unit, when it fights, its critical hits are scored on unmodified successful hits of five plus. Right. Now, this will relate back to your army-wide rule, mm -hmm. which allows you to get either sustained hits against infantry. That's right. If you've gone for that, yep. n you know, yep. what's it called? Uh, it's called Swarming Instinct. Swarming Instinct or lethal hits or even yeah. precision. You could be precision on you five be pluses. precision on fives to hit. Yeah, it's, uh, this is a very, very strong stratagem. The that's fact that it can affect two units yeah. is absolutely bonkers. But there is a combo with this that goes one step further. What's the combo? Um, so it's another stratagem. We'll come, come to that um, in, in a moment. So you need to save up a lot oh, for this? Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm, we'll see. OK, all we'll right. See. What's yeah. the next stratagem then? So the next stratagem is Death Frenzy. All-time favourite, this one. One command point. Uh, when a model in your unit is destroyed, uh, and this is melee, obviously, in the fight phase, um, on a four-up, that model fights before it's removed. And you do all of those fights after your opponent's finished all of their attacks. So 20 Hormigants, for example. Um, each one you kill on a four-up is going to hit you back. Great. Cool. I like the way you lead, led with favourite. Mm. Fight on death. I think you knew what was coming when I said that, though. <laughs> I was like favouring, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very strong. Yes. For one command point as well. I mean, on the Gene Stealers, because yes. 
they you are the prime target with the big unit of gene stealers mm. and every single gene stealer has the potential to do damage yes um, and because you've got so many of them you will statistically roll fours if yeah. you were to do it on like a larger model it's mm. like a 50 50 if it's going to yeah. go off or go not yeah go off or not go on anyway uh, but i think something like a big unit of genie stealers yeah, warriors big warriors, unit of warriors yeah. um they're really those units it's going to do a lot of work for yeah. Yeah. okay nice so they're the first three stratagems so let's take a look at the next three and now for a word from our sponsor c studios they are the experts in providing professional miniature painting services, ensuring your armies always look their best on the battlefield. Whether you're a seasoned veteran or just starting out, Sea Studios can help bring your miniatures to life. Don't miss out on their quality craftsmanship. Okay, Michael, what's strategy number four? Strategy number four is Overrun. All right, uh, and this is similar to a strategy called the same thing in the previous edition. Right. Um, but to cover it now, uh, you will use this just before a Tyranid unit Consolidates. Now this used to be like the most busted stratagem <laughs> ever in ninth edition. This, um, was, I'm going to use overrun. Nah! So what's it now? It's still pretty good. So okay. um, you'll consolidate six inches instead of three. Okay. Provided you can end that consolidation move in engagement range of an enemy unit. Uh, and remember now that you can't consolidate um, in tenth edition uh, unless you can get within engagement range of an enemy unit um, or closer to uh, an objective. Okay. However, if you're in synapse range, you can just make a normal move of six inches, provided the unit's not in engagement range when it is chosen to consolidate. Okay, so let's say you go into combat, mm -hmm. you completely, utterly kill your opponent's unit. Yes. So you're, there's no one near you. Yeah. You can either, if you're in synapse range, mm -hmm. one CP, yep. go six inches, and therefore get an engagement range. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, with the yeah. consolidation. Yeah. With the consolidation move. Mm -hmm. So if there's a unit within seven inches of yes. any of your models in your unit, and that's quite big, seven inches, um, you can basically get them in combat. Yeah. Right. You can tag them. Yeah. Stop them from you know falling back and shooting, falling back and charging, whatever. Or if that's not the case, mm -hmm. you can just move six inches. Yes. Towards like an objective, create a move anywhere block, you want. Get back. <laughs> yeah. You know, get back out of danger yeah. jump in terrain yeah that's very strong yeah yeah this is a, a very very good stratagem okay. all right so I, well, like I think it. we're four for four for good stratagem so far just knocking them out the park so far yeah, yeah. <laughs> right what's number five okay so um number five is synaptic insight okay right now this is the one i was talking about with the combos and you'll start to see these you'll see steve's reaction as he registers all of this so we so, can get critical fives this is where you're going to combo this with yeah? yes yes all right continue okay so in your command phase, yeah. you can pick one of the adaptations that you didn't pick at the start of the game, and you can apply it to up to two synapse range units or one other unit. Okay. Okay. Should we cover the combo now? Yes. I think you're working it out. So you can pick two of your units, essentially, that yes. are in synapse range. Yes. Uh, what you can do is you can, if your army's in sustained hits, you, then you know that you've got um, sixes or additional hits. Then when you get into combat, you know that you can play a Strenal Surge for both of those units to have fives being additional hits. Yes. You can now in the command phase spend this and give precision on sixes to hit to those units as well. Right. So now two of your units are going into combat. Every five they roll is a precision hit and one additional hit that isn't precision. Yes, because the sustained hit will not trigger a precision. That's right. So this is going to be quite a strong combo. I can see this. You're going into a unit. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's got a couple of characters in there. Yeah. You know, maybe there's like a big, really durable unit. Yeah. And you can just go, right, all these attacks on the unit, all these attacks on the characters, kill the characters first, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. those, all those leader abilities won't apply to the unit, maybe if they're defensive That's right. things. That's right. So that makes actually killing the unit even easier because you knocked out the characters first. That's strong. I like that. Yeah, wait till you see some of the uh, unit highlights, Steve. Okay. Mm. Mm. Any more stratagems? Yeah, there's one more stratagem. Yeah. Uh, one of my all-time favourites for the Tyranids. Yeah. Um, this is called uh, Endless Swarm. Okay. And you use this in your command phase. Yeah. And you can pick up to two uh, endless multitude units. It's a keyword. Yeah. You'll see at the bottom of your data sheets, pretty much on Hormigants. Yeah. Um, and other Horde units like Termigants okay. uh, as well. Uh, so you'll pick these units in your command phase and return D3 plus 3 destroyed models to each unit. Okay? 
That's good. So that's a potential of 12 models back uh, across two different units. But not only that, that's like increasing your OC, your objective control. Yes. And also yes, it is. where they are on yes. the table. Yep. Like so that. you can affect objectives. I like it for the fact that if you're below half strength of the unit, you can then suddenly be not below half strength. Yes. And therefore not have to take a Battleshock test. That's cool. Yeah. Um, so the timing of these abilities is is very critical. Uh, and this is a, an absolutely outstanding stratagem. I mean, you got like, six for six. Like the rest. <laughs> you, yeah, they're all outstanding there. 200 players, you cannot complain with the uh, six stratagems you've been dealt. They are immense. Strong. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So we're going to go on to some units next and we'll start looking at those top combos. We're grateful to have Frontline Gaming as our sponsor. They're a truly one-stop shop for your gaming needs from terrain in mats to an extensive range of miniatures in the United States. Plus their community focused events are known to foster what we call the Warhammer 40k spirit. So if you want to start playing an event and you're truly passionate about the game, then make sure you attend one of the next Frontline Gaming events. Okay, Michael, so let's take a look at the first unit you want to cover. All right, so everybody remembers this menace from any previous edition if they've played it, but the flying, the winged hive tyrant. Okay. Okay, now both hive tyrants uh, variants get this special rule. Okay. Um, and it's the will of the hive mind. What it means is that um, you can use a stratagem for zero command points, even if it's already been used on a Tyranids unit within 12 inches of this model. Not just itself then? No. Okay, so you could go, ah, oh, like a bit of overrun, want that in two places. Mm -hmm. I like a little bit, bit of that critical hits on a five plus, mm -hmm. and I'll just sprinkle it onto that one too. Mm -hmm. That's good, yeah. I'd like feel no pain five plus on two different units. Yeah, that's quite so good. I'll take that. I'll yeah. Take that. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's very good. Um, now, the Winged Hive Tyrant also has a really cool psychic ability. Yeah. In the fight phase, uh, on a one, it takes D3 more wounds. On a two plus, you select an enemy unit within 12, yeah. not even in engagement range. Okay. Yeah. And you subtract one from the attack's characteristic of their melee weapons. Sorry, when do you trigger this? Start of the fight phase. Right. Any turn. Well, obviously, because it's it's just, it's just a constant. It's just a, their psychic ability. I don't. It's that. really good, isn't it? Yeah, that's really strong. <laughs> yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Manipulating attack's characteristic. Mad good. Well, if you think about it, if a, if a model's got like four attacks, mm -hmm. you've now cut out 25% of their effectiveness. If they've only got two attacks, you've cut out 50%. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Wow. It's really good. Um, what does need to be said, though, is the winged hive tyrant can be shot. Okay. Um, can't join like tyrant guard. The foot tyrant can join tyrant guard, but doesn't have that psychic ability. Okay. What sort of defense? Profiles ago. Uh, two plus save now. Okay. Um, so Good. and then the high toughness you can expect from yeah. monsters uh, in the game as it is, and a four pin bump, of course. I mean that is good. I would definitely be thinking this could be one for that five plus feel no pain for me because that sounds like a real utility yeah. unit. Yeah, it's very good. Very that good. sounds really good. Very good. Okay, so what unit do you want to look at next? Well, um, let's touch on very briefly the Swarm Lord. Okay. Um, so it was previewed by Warhammer Community, um, uh, but he basically in your command phase gives you an extra command point which is obviously fantastic when so, there's so few. Let's talk about that right now, because mm -hmm. every time you can get a unit that gives you an additional command point, this is actually increasing your total CPs, providing this model still on the table, obviously, by the end of the game, by 50%. 100%? Because it's doubling it. No, because oh, that's 50, you're, of course, it's 50%. Of course, because it's your opponent's turn as well. You won't get it in your opponent's command phase. But I like where your head's at. Yeah. It's very, very effective. It's very good. If it's all of a good. sudden I had 50% other resources, yeah. you name it, yes. points, yeah. time on the table, whatever other resource we want to think about, and you go, right, just have 50% extra for your army, that's ridiculously good, especially when you combine that with six incredible stratagems. And yes, if you combine it with his other rule, which certainly makes it feel like you've got 100% more resources. Yeah. So after your opponents use the stratagem, Yeah. He can trigger this ability and any future uses of that stratagem by your opponent cost an additional command point. Right, so the command point reroll, say. Mm -hmm. Next time I use it, it's going to cost me two CPs. That's right. Or maybe Overwatch. Or Okay, that is disgusting. That's now starting to get close to the 100% effectiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's an auto-include. He's pretty good. How yeah. do you not, depending on his points, but how do you not... Put him in a list. I don't know. It's a very difficult decision. Yeah. Uh, and he can join Tyrant Guard, like yeah. a walking Tyrant. Um, so, yeah. And speaking of lists, we will be doing a lot more members content. So if you want to become a YouTube member, then all the links are below to become a member. And when everything's out, all the points, mm -hmm. 
along with everything else, we'll be doing a full SWOT analysis of the Tyranid army, along with a list, we'll go over how it roughly plays, what we've included and why, and whether we've been able to equate and all the points together mm -hmm. with, with the rules. That's all coming as members' content. So if you do want to get that and access to our Discord channel where we can discuss 10th edition, then do consider becoming a member. Okay, cool. Cool. So what do you want to talk about next? Let's talk about the Broodlord um, who can lead a unit of gene stealers. So we're going to... Cover the Broodlord first. The Broodlord first? Let's cover the Broodlord. Okay, Brood what Lord does first. he do? Yeah. Um, so the Broodlord, um, he's kind of like a, a reasonable beat stick in combat. So um, he's got six attacks. Uh, he's got twin linked. He's okay. got two pairs of claws and he's got devastating wounds. So that twin linked, combining then with devastating wounds. So twin linked allows you to re-roll the wound roll mm -hmm. if you don't like what you see in front of you. Just yeah. pick it up and re-roll it. Yeah. And devastating wounds is a critical wound roll of a six plus that turns all of your damage into mortal wounds, which yeah. skips any armor save yeah. or invulnerable save. And it also creates damage to spill over from one model to another, yeah. which is very different to normal damage in the game. Yeah, then he's damage two. So that means every six to, to wound is going to be two more wounds. Great. Which is excellent. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. good. Okay, so he's got a psychic ability on his data sheet. Uh, and in the fight phase, he can pick an enemy unit um, within engagement range uh, and then minus one to their, their hit rolls. So minus one to hit. Yeah, cool. And you can combine that with minus one attack. Yeah, if you if help. they're close together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you really wanted to say, hey, that unit over there, that's yeah. not fighting this turn. Yeah. Minus one to hit, minus one attack. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, very good. Um, okay, so here's the kicker. Yeah. If he's leading a unit, yeah, that unit gets devastating wounds. Right. So now the gene stealers are also getting devastating wounds. Yes. Right. So let's talk about the gene stealers. Okay. How many attacks do they get each? Four. Four. Okay. Do they have any rerolls to wound? Well. Their rule is that they reroll ones to wound. Okay. But if they're fighting someone on an objective, Steve, they reroll all of their wounds. So they reroll all wounds when fighting a unit on an objective. That's right. And with devastating wounds. That's right. With four attacks a model. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty much dead. Yeah. I, don't worry better. about getting there though. Yeah. Because they've got scout eight. In the case, the Scout is another universal special rule that allows you at the start of the t basically game, before yeah. whoever takes the first turn, this allows this unit to pre-game move. Mm -hmm. In this case, eight inches. Eight inches. Yes. Now, do you know what? You know earlier we said about a um, an enhancement to re-roll a charge? Can mm -hmm. you re-roll a charge with that ability? Yeah, 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 yeah. He could actually be a really good candidate because you definitely want this unit to hit. <laughs> yeah. Because it is quite fragile. Obviously, Gene Stealer's now got two mm -hmm. wounds each. Bit of a glow up there. But, yeah. And I think re-rolling a hit roll on him is quite nice as well. It is. Because he nice. can be quite damaging. Nice. So yeah. if you did make that charge and you mm. didn't need the re-roll, mm. I think that's quite... If you've got the points left, I think you throw it on him. And it's very scary charging this unit because you can use that death frenzy stratagem. To fight death. With those devastating wounds. And if you're on an objective yourself, yeah. your opponent's going to be on the objective too. Um, so... Very scary unit. Yeah, and I think we we'll definitely need some members content on how to kill Tyranids. <laughs> okay, so we've got two members contents to make, <laughs> list review, and then alternatively, how to deal with Tyranids. Yeah, you're definitely going to need it for this next one, Steve. Go on. This is probably my top pick from the codec, from the index. Go on, okay. what is it? Uh, old One-Eye. All right. Okay, he's cool. Yeah, go on, what's right. he do? So he's got a Feel No Pain 5+. plus. Strong. Good to start off with. He's toughness nine, two plus save, and nine wounds. Yeah. Um, and he's basically the named Khan effects. Um, so he's decent in combat. Yeah. Right. So this is not where it stops. Okay. Because okay. he can lead. Khan Sorry. Effects. He can lead a unit of Khan effects. A unit of Khan effects, which can go up to two. Okay. In size. He can lead two Khan effects. Yeah. Okay. And while he's leading a unit, yeah. they can re-roll any hit rolls for their attacks. So he acts like a chapter master of 9th edition for the Khan effects. Yeah. Okay, great. With so, a 5 plus Feel No Pain? He's got a 5 plus Feel No Pain, yes. And you could give the unit a 5 plus Feel No Pain? Oh, you could with the stratagem, yes. Um, they move 8 inches. Okay. Okay. And, uh, of course, the Khan effects themselves are 2 plus save, 9 yeah. wounds. Um, they've got a really cool special rule, Steve. Which is? Um, after you've shot them, yeah. if they've taken one or more wounds, yeah. they can make a normal move towards the closest enemy unit, which can end in engagement range. 
Really? Yes. So although it says you can make a normal move, yes. you can still end an engagement range. Yes. So how far do the Carnifexes move then? Uh, so you roll one dice, yeah. and then you add two to the result, and that's the number of inches they can move. So if you rolled a four, you add two, so they can move six inches. Uh, and again, of course, they finish in engagement range. That's yeah. very strong. Pretty mad. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm scared now. Next unit. Okay. So the next units, um, these are very brief ones, uh, and it's more like their utility in the game. So the Turvagon, uh, I'm always going to shout out the Turvagon, she can bring back in the command phase D3 plus 3 Termagants to a unit within 6 inches. Okay. Now let's say you've got a unit of 20 Termagants with her, uh, and you weren't happy with bringing back just D3 plus 3, you could use the stratagem. Uh, for another D3 plus 3. For another D3 plus 3. Now, yeah. you, you remember, you can't go above your starting strength. No. Okay, so if you're taking a 20, you can always go up to 20, you can't go beyond that. That's right. So that's where quite big units does come in handy. Yes. And... She can only bring back just termagants. Just, just termagants. termagants. And uh, needs to be said, they are max size 20 cool. uh, in 10th edition. All right. Yeah, cool. So she's awesome, um, and she's got a, a psychic ability that gives them lethal hits on their weapons. So it makes the termagants a bit better at um, wounding enemy units. Cool. Those. Yeah. And that would stack with sustained so, if you took that. Uh, yes, yes. So we each six you'd roll. Yeah, would lead to one automatic wound and one hit roll that you'd then have to wound with. Yeah, yeah. So it Very works, good. works quite well. That's quite well. good combo there. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next beastie we're going to talk about yeah. is the Tyrannifex. Okay, what does the Tyrannifex do? Right, the Tyrannifex, uh, Steve, is toughness twelve. Yeah, a two plus save and sixteen wounds. Yes. If that wasn't difficult enough to kill, yeah. It has an innate ability called Resilient Organism, where it's minus one to incoming damage oh, no. from weapons. And no, so no, no. You've got no. a damage two weapon shooting this guy. It becomes damage one. Um, needless to say, okay, so I'll explain um, how Devastating Wounds work. So Devastating Wounds on a six inflicts your damage characteristic of the weapon um, as mortal wounds. Mm -hmm. If you go against a unit that has damage reduction, it does also reduce the mortal wounds inflicted. Because you're affecting the characteristic that's exactly. being converted into mortals. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. He's quite hard to kill. Yes. And his objective control is five. Okay. So he could just sit on an objective. Counting as five Count regular five, models. Never dying. Let's, no. Let's be real. Yeah. Uh, and then he can shoot his rupture cannon. Okay. What does that do? Well, it's two shots. Yeah. Um, hits on threes, but it has the heavy keyword. So, so if he stays still. Plus one to hit. Plus one to hit. Nice hit on twos. Yeah. It's... Strength 18. That's quite strong. Yeah, that's one of the strongest guns I've actually ever heard of. Yes, ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's strong. Yeah. Okay. AP minus four. Yeah. Damage 2d6. Okay, so he is your bespoke anti-vehicle, anti-monster monster. Yes. This yeah. guy, stick him at the back, stick him on an objective, keep him still, and just let him in a good firing line, yep. take out anything big and nasty. That's pretty it's good. Cool. cool. Yes. It's very cool. Uh, and then I've got two more units I really want to talk about. Yeah. Um, so the Lictor, mm -hmm. uh, one of my favourites from the previous edition, yeah. uh, has a really cool keyword, fight first. So okay. a special rule. Yeah. Uh, and what that means is he fights in the fight first step of the fight phase. Yeah. Um, which means if you charge him, yeah. because you always start with the non-active player, yeah. the Lictor will hit you before you fight him. Right. Okay. Okay. And his attacks have the precision keyword inbuilt. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And because uh, I really like the new Von Ryan's Leapers from yes. the bot, I think those models are really nice. Yeah. Um, can he join them? No, he's not a leader. Ah. He's not even a character. But in a very rare situation, he is lone operative. Okay. So you can't shoot this guy unless you're within twelve inches of him. But you could maybe have a big group of Von you Ryan Leapers nearby. You could take three Lictors. Yeah. Death Leaper. Yeah. And some Von Ryans. Is a little package. They'll all infiltrate. They'll yes. all have the infiltrator uh, rule. All fight first. They're all fight first. Stealthy or lone operative. They're all stealth, so they're minus one to hit as well from range. Yeah. That's quite a cool little, like, yeah. stealthy package. And it's all precision as well, so. Yeah. They're very good at taking characters out. That's very good, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Any other units you want to talk about then? The last one is, is one of my favourites. It's the Trigon. Okay, what's he doing? Trigon. Um, this guy has Deep Strike. Yeah. Uh, and when it's, when it's setting up on the board yeah. from Deep Strike, so that's at nine inches horizontally of enemy units, yeah. anywhere on the board, um, you can set this one up horizontally more than three inches. Okay. But it can't charge in the same turn. Right. So there is a core stratagem. Yes. Rapid ingress. Yes. So you could set this guy up in your opponent's turn. 
Yes. And using deep strike, yes. you could be out of three inches, like just over three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then in your next turn, this guy can move 10 inches. And charge something. Charge something with 12 attacks at strength 9, AP 2. Yeah. Damage 3. What? Yes. Damage 3? This guy slaps. Oh my, I thought you were going to say like damage one with 12 attacks, like a, like an anti-infantry, but no, he will kill anything. Good choice for sustained hits on fives to hit. Yeah. Wow. Packing a punch. Yeah. That is very strong. Yeah. I mean, we've covered some fantastic combos yeah. there. Um, now, just to quickly touch on, mm -hmm. do you think the army has some good play around the tactical objectives or would you go more fixed objectives? Um, I think you can definitely build Tyranids with the Index to complete a variety of um, the tactical missions yeah. uh, drawing the random cards. You know, there's plenty of little units that can run around um, to do different things, like even Lictors, yeah. fantastic. They set up further up the board. Cleanse an objective. Do cards early on. Yeah. Um, so they've definitely got the utility to do um, the random objectives. Yeah, they're also um, less susceptible to some of the fixed objectives. You're not taking a huge amount of characters leading units. True. Um, yeah, you're not taking tons of monsters to no. bring it down. Um, so you're you're nice and, and resilient against uh, secondary picks from your opponent as well. That's one thing that we will talk about as well in terms of members' content, more around the you know the use of those kind of mm -hmm. secondaries how to build so you're, yeah. you don't give up any as well or give up very minimal yeah that allows you to control your margins a little bit easier when it comes to uh being successful on the table well michael it's been fantastic i'm super excited to, i'm not actually i can't <laughs> <laughs> i can't wait who am i kidding um i actually wish i liked nids more yeah because they do their army does seem cool yeah their rules are appealing they've got such a great play style i think um, so yeah, let's see what this can do in 10th edition. Yeah, absolutely. If you've liked this review, please let us know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe and do consider becoming a member if that's something that you would like to consider. You'll get loads more content on lists and tactical analysis. We do tournament reports and of course, obviously, how to beat Nids. So that's all to come. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video. Are you looking to start playing Warhammer 40k 10th edition? And if so, maybe you feel slightly daunted by some of the complex rules. Learning any game for the first time can be slightly difficult. So we've put together the most essential course for you. And that is our start playing course. This course isn't for everyone and it is exactly made for those people that are first of all getting into the game. We've got step-by-step -step tutorials which are gonna break down everything so that it's simple to understand each phase of the game and then we've created missions and games that you can play with a friend or by yourself to ensure that you're maximizing your learning and over the course of the week become really confident with the rules and if you want to sign up for our start playing course then all you need to do is check out the links below and get signed up